topic for today, guys, is to talk about quantitative electrolysis. Basically, the math of how much stuff would be electroplated or how much time it would take to electroplate a certain quantity of subject, of, of substance. All right. So here's our basic strategy. If we know current and time, if we know the current in amperes and we know how long that current ran, we can find Coulomb. And once we have the Coulombs, we can use Faraday's constant to get to moles of electrons. And once we know moles of electrons, using the half reaction involved, we can find moles of whatever substances we're interested in. And of course, once we know moles of substance, it's easy to get to grams. So that would be going from left to right. We can do these calculations from right to left. If we start with grams of stuff deposited, we can find out how long we would have to run that current to get it to electroplate. That's the basic strategy we're working with. So it turns into a big, giant, factor label problem. Okay, so here's what we know. Coulombs are defined as amperes, which is our current unit, times the time that current flowed in seconds. So if you're given minutes or hours, you have to convert your time into seconds. But the amperes times the second gives us Coulomb. And then, once we have Coulombs, well, a Coulomb is defined, well, we can turn that into Faraday's constant. The charge on one mole of electrons is 96,500 Coulombs. So one mole of electrons is 96,500 Coulombs, or we could write conversion factor, one mole of electrons for 96,500 Coulombs. Or we could flip it upside down, but this is the version I think we're going to want. All right, so the amperes times the second is equals Coulombs, and then we want moles of electrons, so that would be our Coulombs times one over the Faraday constant. To give, a, give us moles of electrons, correct? So we could do this in one big step. We take the amperes times the second times one over the Faraday's constant, which is what we would be doing, right? That's supposed to be an F. <laughs> and so we're almost there, all right? We're, we're down to moles of electrons. And then we can use the reduction half reaction to go from moles of electrons to what we want. So let's say we have a metal ion, and it takes two electrons to re reduce it to the metal. Then we are going to go, okay, well, I have, you know, this, mole, this many moles of electrons. And if it takes two electrons to get to my substance, then I will just do that conversion. And then, of course, once we have moles of substance, then we can just use the ZFM, right? We can multiply by the ZFM, and we're done. All right, so you do have to know the half reaction involved. You need to know how many electrons are in it. So these problems end up being not too bad. It's a big, giant factor label problem. So shall we try one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Here is a typical problem. We want to calculate the number of grams of aluminum produced in two hours for the electrolysis of molten aluminum chloride. The electrical current is 12 amps. All right. What's our half reaction? We're going from aluminum ions to aluminum. How many electrons will that take? Three. All right, so we need to know this. All right, we have our time in hours. We have to convert that to seconds. All right, we know that there are... Okay, <laughs> these guys are faster than me. Right? All right, so how many hours? How many seconds? 7,200 seconds. 
Now, we do know it's a 3 sig fig. All right, so we have 7,200 seconds, and we ran that current first. That was a 12 amp current. All right, so now we have Coulomb, right? So current times seconds gives us Coulombs. And we want to convert it to moles of electrons. So we know that there are 96,500 Coulombs and one mole of electrons. Right? And how many moles of electrons does it take to reduce aluminum ion? Three. So there are three electrons for one mole of aluminum. And then one mole of aluminum. Which we need to look up on our periodic tables. What is the GFM of aluminum? I think it's like 26.98. Give or take. That's it's right around there. Okay. And so we just need to do the math out. Like I said, it's a big, giant, saturated problem. Answer? Say that again. 8.05 grams. Certainly seems reasonable. Okay. How do you guys feel with this? They're not too bad, are they? Once I can remember how to do my conversion factors. Should we try a problem going in the other direction? going in the other direction. All right. The half reaction for the formation of magnesium metal upon the electrolysis of molten magnesium chloride is here. Magnesium ion plus two electrons gives magnesium metal. How many seconds would be required to produce 25 grams of magnesium from magnesium chloride if the current is 50 amps? Yes. The Faraday's constant is on the equation sheet. Uh, does it tell us um, that Coulombs is uh, amps times seconds? Okay. Then we need to know that. All right. All right. So we, we have to calculate back in the other direction. So we have 25 grams of magnesium. So we can put that into moles of magnesium, right? Because we know that 24 3 grams of magnesium is one mole of magnesium, right? And then for one mole of magnesium, there were two electrons, right? Uh, from the balanced equation, for the, the half reaction. And then times Faraday's constant. I feel like stopping here with Coulombs and then using that Coulombs equals current times time. Th that's just what is working for me. <laughs> you guys can do it differently if you want to. Um, so how many Coulombs is this? I have wrote it wrong again. 199,000 Coulombs. Okay. All right, and then we know that Coulombs is equal to the amps times the time in seconds, right? So the seconds is equal to the Coulombs divided by the amps divided by 50 amps. What do we get? We get 3,980 seconds. 